Hi there everybody, Adam Cleary from 442 here and today's video we are focusing it's, it's about um, uh, today's so today what we're going to be looking at is um Yeah, it's about Alan St. Maximan. Alright then, lads, if you've not seen this morning, there is good news and bad news. Harvey Barnes is arriving from Leicester City for around about £35 million, and Alan St. Maximan is departing, going to Saudi Arabia for a similar sort of fee. But which part of that you find the good news, and which part of that you find the bad news, is varying between a lot of people. You see, to some, St. Maximan is an undeniably talented, precocious star who just never quite had the consistency or the drive or the determination to really succeed at the top level, and Harvey Barnes is a proven reliable goal scorer who's going to add loads more to that side than he would over the course of the season. And to other people, Alan St. Maximan is class and Harvey Barnes is f***ing boring. Now we're going to get to Barnes in a little bit, but first, why do the people who love Alan St. Maximan so much love Alan St. Maximan so much? Well, to quote the road dog Jesse James, I got two words for you. Steve Bruce. So if you can just steal yourself to relive the trauma we're about to go back through here, Bruce's Newcastle United kind of looked a little bit something like this, didn't they? It was a flat back five with all the players in the squad he didn't think hated his guts that week. Two in the middle, one to pass and one to run. Miguel Almiron over on the right-hand side before he was a goal scorer when his job was to literally just scurry around like Speedy Gonzalez and double up on any dangerous players. Callum Wilson up top in case a chance magically happened and... Alan Sant Maximan. And the tactics were thus. The three central defenders, their job was to drop back as far as they could, and then the wing backs don't go pushing on. Your job is to drop back as far as you can. And the two central midfielders, don't get ambitious now. Your job is to drop back as far as you can. And Almiron, I know you're quick, but make sure you're dropping back just so we can chase down any loose balls in St. Maximan. Drop back a little bit. Oh, and Callum Wilson, don't you drop back. You're the centre forward. You've got to stay up front. But also, I mean, kind of do a bit. Just no further than, like, the halfway line. And the way this system worked was that everybody would defend as deep as they possibly could. And when they turned the ball over, they didn't try and reset or build out from the back or give it to Shelby or try and do anything clever with it. They would just kick the ball to Alan St. Maximan. And the theory here was because we were so defensive and so cramped in and so penned back into our own box, this would leave the entire football pitch for him to run into. And what's mad is... That did actually work. I mean, I say worked. It worked to the extent that Newcastle got enough points to stay in the division and not got relegated. It didn't work in any kind of, oh, isn't football exciting? Isn't life worth living sense? That wasn't what Steve Bruce was about. But you would. Those first two seasons under Bruce, you would see that quite a lot. So Maximum would get on the ball and Newcastle would try and hit a counter-attack. And what he would do is he would sprint at terrified defenders who were running back to their own goal. He would tie them up in knots. He would beat them and he would create chances for Callum Wilson. And this meant that for a long time, literally the only entertaining thing, the only reason you would ever watch Newcastle United was Alan St. Maximan. He was slash is a bit of a throwback, to be honest, to like a slightly simpler time where football was less about patterns of play and less about pressing and counter-pressing and less about defenders contributing to the attack and attackers contributing to the defence. He's just that old-fashioned, look at me, I'm a winger, I have loads of tricks, watch me go kind of player. He's not the kind of player you can adequately explain by talking about numbers and phases and contributions and stats and whatnot because... That's not what he's about, because at its heart, that's not what football's about. Basically, he's the sort of player who, if you give him space, he will absolutely kill you. And because Newcastle played this awful, awful football, there was all this space for him to play in. So he looked amazing because under these circumstances, he was. But the problem for him last season, by extension, the problem for Newcastle, is that now when they win the ball, just wave the old magic wand here, it tends to look more like this. And now there is no space whatsoever because teams are scared of them and they are the ones who sit back and they invite them on and they try and crowd the areas. They try and make it difficult for them to play through. And that is the exact opposite game for someone like Alan St. Maximan. As is nicely illustrated by the pile of magazines here, there is simply no space for him. And that was the challenge for him this season. Can he adjust his game accordingly? Can he be less about counter-attacking and breaking into huge areas that the opposition aren't defending because they're not scared of you? And can he become more disciplined? Can he help break things down? Can he have better interplay with his teammates? And 
He did. During that really good run they went on in the second half of the season, he was a really important part of that. He started most of those games. He was brilliant against Man United. He got a great assist against West Ham. He was giving teams other things to think about, even if it wasn't leading to him directly contributing to goals or assists. But as has happened a couple of times with him, he picked up another injury. He was out for a couple of weeks and that got rid of any momentum. Add to the fact he's not a very visually busy player off the ball as well. Like this Newcastle side is full of players who when they lose the ball, they will immediately chase it back they will immediately try and cover over and when Sir Maxima loses the ball he tends to sit on the floor ask the referee why he hasn't got a foul then gingerly get back up and hobble into position and rightly or wrongly that does people's heads in and the thing is in Harvey Barnes Newcastle could not have hoped to find a more philosophical opposite to Sir Maxima if they tried like if we just look at the two of them side by side over the last season it's absolutely astonishing like in his goals in his shots in his shots on target in his shot on target percentage every single metric here except free kicks because neither of them take them. He's got the output of one of the best, 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 best attackers in the Premier League. In fact, even if you just look at his overall goals and assists contribution last season, allegedly a dreadful season for Leicester, and I'm sure he would tell you a bad season personally, he's still contributing the same level as Fernandez, as Mitrovic, as Firmino, as Mares, as Rodrigo, and more than Ward-Prowse, Matoma, Gundogan, Grealish, McAllister, Nunes, and... Miguel Almiron. In fact, if you take Harvey Barnes' goals and assist contribution from Leicester, who were relegated, and compare them to every single player at Newcastle United, who finished in the Champions League places, he contributed more than every other player bar Wilson. And he does it by being the absolute polar opposite to Alan St. Maximan as well. He plays from the same position, his objective is to get in on goal and take chances, but he does not go past any players. He cannot beat a man. Like, just compare the in-possession statistics from last season. Like, this is allegedly a bad season for Alan St. Maximan. He was in and out with the side, and yet he was still the top player in the league for taking opponents on, for carrying the ball, for running it physically into the penalty area. Barnes, by comparison, was almost the worst player in the league for trying to go past players. Like, you could not have a bigger dichotomy if you tried. So the question is then, how does Barnes do it? If you're really bad at going past players and breaking into the space, how do you have such outstanding goal and assist contributions? Certainly not because Leicester were amazing and they were laying it on a plate for him. He's got, he's got a system. He knows what to do. And that is that he absolutely loves a 1-2. Like, if you're defending Harvey Barnes, he's not going to go past you. He can't do that. But if you see him pass the ball to someone just out of your eye line... You are in trouble. His timing and his execution for that is as much of a trademark for him as dribbling and going past players is for St. Maximan. He is the Alan St. Maximan of the edge of the box one two. In fact, there was a brilliant stat about him in Michael Cox's right up before the athletic. I don't even know how you go and find this statistic. That's how good it is. Since 2018, no player has scored more give and go goals in the Premier League than Harvey Barnes. That, I think that might be my favorite stat I've ever heard. But what's great for Newcastle United is this exact thing. It's very hard to play a give and go, very hard to use that ability if you're playing for a Leicester City side who are all over the place, who are defending for most of the game. So you put Barnes in this Newcastle team when they're camped in the opposition's half when they're trying to find a way through, he's almost the perfect player to try and unpick a defense. Barnes got 13 goals for Leicester last season in the league for a Leicester team that was that bad. I'd be astonished, astonished if he doesn't equal or better that for Newcastle. So Maximan got one, one goal in the league, playing in probably the best Newcastle side most of us have seen in years. So surely, surely this is an amazing upgrade. Well, here's the thing, right? Two things can be true at once. It can be true that Harvey Barnes is a huge huge improvement for Newcastle United down that side. He's a massive upgrade on St. Maximine. He's going to let them do loads more things in that area of the pitch next season. But it can also be true that even by making that improvement, you have still worsened the team. And that's because for me personally and a few other people, maybe not you, but that's that's okay, just for me and a few other people, players like Alan St. Maximan are why you watch football. Yeah, he's inconsistent. Yeah, he does your head in. Yeah, his end product's sometimes lacking. But when it clicks and when it works, there is no one else in this Newcastle United team, no one else in the Premier League hardly, who will do those things, who could have done those things during the Steve Bruce year, who could have kept you excited to watch your football club. And of course, that's no reason to keep a player if you want to change things, you want to do stuff. That's just pure sentimentality. But I don't know. Sentimentality is worth something. I, I'm going to miss him. Do I think it's a good deal? God, yes, absolutely. Would I do it if I was in Eddie Howe's position? Almost certainly yes. Does it make me happy? No, not at all. And just 
One final point on this, all right? Because I know it's very easy to look at this as a debate between head versus heart, right? Barnes is pure numbers, St. Maximan is, is pure sentiment. But the thing about football, right, is that it should always be both. It should always be numbers and sentiment. It should always be about how you combine the two, how you find the balance between the two. And my worry about this transfer is not from a footballing perspective at all. It's just that the scales tip ever so slightly the wrong way for me. You can make whatever argument you want about it, right? Some people just really like players like Alan St. Maximan and they are sad when their football team sells them. It's, uh, it's me. I'm some people. But anyway, that's, I'm not trying to be negative about it. I think Barnes is a great player and I have a great time talking about him next season. But let me know what you think, please, Newcastle United fans. Good, bad, great deal, bad deal, heartbroken, elated, all good stuff in the comments below. Thank you. In the meantime, of course, you know the drill by now. Please do subscribe to 442 here on YouTube. And please do share the video if you enjoyed it. Because that, that, YouTube sees you doing that and goes, oh, that's good. So I like it. Anyway, rambling outros aside, get me on Twitter at Adam Cleary, C-L-E-R-Y. And goodbye, sweet prince. It was it was fun while it lasted. Well, it wasn't. It was Steve Bruce. But you were fun while, while you lasted. Au, au revoir. Je ne regrette rien